I want to associate myself uh, with the protocols that have been established and say how delight, delighted I am to be here today to participate in this uh, great launch. Congratulations, uh, Madam Asuga and your team. Congratulations, all our chairpersons and members of the tribunals and our staff members for this great work. You have truly carried the mantle of shared leadership and you have shown that it actually works. Congratulations. Let us appreciate our registrar our team, our chairs, and our members. I think the hashtag should be sharing is caring, is it? And it should also be about uh, shared leadership. Uh, because I think when I see people struggling uh, with leadership, I am like, they have not met the Holy Spirit that met us in the judiciary and they told us that uh, <clears throat> the judiciary belongs to all of us. And therefore, everybody is holding a piece of it. And that is why I was so happy to listen to all the speakers, to hear how we have moved these pieces together sometimes even without the knowledge of the CJ. Thank you, Justice Katurima, for carrying that heavy burden of helping our registrar to see to it that we figured out how we can bring the judiciary together with the tribunals as envisaged under Article 159. You can imagine if that burden was carried by the CJ, I wouldn't even lift myself. Listening to Justice Renaura, how they have worked painstakingly to see to it that uh, people can now access justice through technology. You know, when we started thinking about uh, the first uh, transformation of the judiciary, uh, Madam uh, Deputy Speaker, when you were the Chief Registrar of the Judiciary and you came up with the first vision and they said that uh, technology is an enabler to justice. So all these foundations you worked on that time is actually the outcome of what we are seeing today that people can file their cases from the comfort of their offices, from the comfort of their homes. They can opt to do a virtual hearing from wherever they are with their smartphones. And, you know, this is the work of very, very collaborative uh, shared responsibility that we have seen. And I think there is something to learn from the judiciary although we are always uh, taken for granted. So <laughs> thank you everybody uh, for what uh, you have been doing to support the tribunals, uh, the principal judge, and the principal judges of the courts of equal status. I recognize Justice Angote, whose court actually supervises no less than eight tribunals in the ELC. So the work you do there to nurture the tribunals and even to bring discipline uh, to our people that you must first of all go to the first point of call before you come to court is well appreciated. And my friend, um, uh, Senior Counsel Aga, I think you said something very profound that actually the tribunal is the apex, is the apex court. Because if you have the foundation properly laid out, the first interaction you have with the court is correct and things are properly handled there, 
So even at the Supreme Court, we have no problems because we have never even encountered a matter that originated from the tribunal because they are properly handled. So well done. Uh, keep up the good work. So I join all of us today uh, as we come together to mark the launch of three pivotal initiatives. The Tribunal's Shared Service Infrastructure, which is a first. You know, sometimes we become very possessive ourselves of the chamber that we occupy, of the court uh, that we use. I do not want to share a story of a court that was found being used for another, by another organ, and they had to be evicted. <laughs> From, from using that court. So we are learning a lot, even as a judiciary. To launch your website, and also the tribunal's registry manual that standardizes all the practices and procedures that are applied here, is really a momentous occasion that represents a transformative rip a transformative and innovative leap forward for our tribunals and as calling our commitment to enhancing service delivery within our justice system. As everybody has said this morning, tribunals hold a very unique and indispensable role in our justice system designed to offer a simplified and specialized avenue for accessing justice. Central to the judiciary's strategic blueprint, our social transformation through access to justice, is the promotion of the multi-door approach to justice. In this grand vision, tribunals do not merely stand as one of the many options but they are absolutely a crucial, critical pathway, integral to our mission of providing justice for all. Tribunals offer an alternative that is specialized, an alternative that is less formal, that is more flexible and more efficient than the conventional courts. We have had the turnaround period for all the cases that come to the tribunal, which is really commendable. As we navigate an era of rapid social legal evolution, it is imperative that we strengthen and expand these pathways to justice. Tribunals often, the first point of contact for many Kenyans seeking justice, are the grassroots gateways, 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 where the voices of our citizens are heard and where they receive the justice they deserve. And if we get it right, at these entry levels, that also include the magistrates' courts and the small claims courts, we will have fundamentally transformed the justice journeys for most Kenyans. Today's launch, therefore, of the shared service infrastructure, the website and the registry manual is a giant step towards ensuring that our tribunals become models of excellence in service delivery. And what we have seen when we walked around is nothing less than a model set up of dispute resolution. Congratulations. It is important also to appreciate that today's event is part of the successful transition process of tribunals from the executive to the judiciary. We have successfully transitioned 26 tribunals from the executive to the judiciary. And I think it's becoming quite fashionable to have tribunals transition. Yesterday I received another letter 
from the Retirement uh, Benefits Tribunal. They also want to come to the judiciary, and we welcome them with both hands. So this transition is not merely an administrative change. It symbolizes the integration of these tribunals into the judiciary ethos. Now all the 26 tribunals must contribute to our shared endeavor, upholding high performance standards, leveraging on technology, and adopting innovative practices to guarantee efficient and fair service delivery. The impact of this transition is already evident in the impressive performance of our tribunals as demonstrated by their case clearance rates. In the last financial year, the tribunals achieved a remarkable case clearance rate of 111%. Resolving 15,173 cases compared to 13,712 cases that were filed, which means you are clearing your backlog very efficiently. Notably, the Rent Restriction Tribunal, the Business Premises Rent Tribunal, and the Tax Appeals Tribunal and the cooperative tribunal have rent the way with the highest clearance rates. Thank you, Justice Renaura, for installing uh, for me um, an app that I can look at, even as I sat there, a dashboard, and I can be able to scroll even tribunal by tribunal to see your rate clearance rates, to see your rate of adjournment, and to see everything that happens. Now we don't even have to suffer when people come for interview to ask for information. It is all there, I will ask. And why are you adjourning so many cases in your court and now you want a promotion? This is really excellent uh, because it reflects the results of our performance which ever with courts and tribunals on a you know, real-time basis. During the last evaluation, the Sports Disputes Tribunal, Tax Appeals Tribunal, and Business Premises Rent Tribunal were recognized as amongst the best performers in our PMMU. Let us appreciate them. Additionally, I commend the Political Parties Dispute Tribunal for their dedication during the 2022 electoral cycle, where that tribunal promptly resolved all the pre-election disputes, enabling the 2022 general elections to proceed smoothly as planned. The Political Parties Dispute Tribunal, are you here? We recognize you because you dealt with very sensitive matters on a real-time basis. The performance improvements we have witnessed since the tribunals transitioned to the judiciary are a testament to their embracing of the ethos of a court and tribunals of excellence, which we all champion and dream about under the Sturge blueprint. However, as we are all aware, the transition process is not yet complete due to the lack of the legislative framework to streamline the operations of the tribunals. I appreciate the government's efforts in this regard, particularly the cabinet's approval of the tribunal's bill last year I take this opportunity to convey this message through our deputy speaker to urge the National Assembly to expandite the legislative process, which has been pending before uh, the House, to bring this transition to its full conclusion. Distinguished guests this morning, 
For some time, we have envisaged a one-stop home for tribunals, a centralized location where we can harness our resources by providing shared administrative services to support all our tribunals. I've heard the Deputy Chief Registrar talk about the Tribunals Plaza. That is a dream that we have, and we in the judiciary, we never get tired of dreaming. Although we are very dilapidated infrastructure, we still dream of a Tribunals Plaza where we can offer one-stop services to all our tribunals. We dream of a Supreme Court. We dream of a Court of Appeal. We dream of ERRC. We even presented a proposal to the Treasury of how we can quickly buy a property and move ERRC, the small claims court, but nobody seems to listen to us or even consider our request. We write letters, then when we write, we, 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 we call, they say, oh, we, we forgot, resent. So I'm tired of resending letters to the Treasury. Um, I don't know how we can get our own money and do these things. So it is equally important to have a single point of access where citizens can easily locate tribunal services. All this shared one-stop shop is not for our own convenience, but also for the convenience of uh, citizens. The previous arrangement where tribunals were scattered across the city was untenable making it challenging for citizens to find the tribunal services they needed. Going forward, this will no longer be an issue as all tribunals will now be housed here at the Kenya Re Towers. This is a giant step forward in making justice more accessible. We enhance efficiency in service delivery and ensuring prudent management of our resources. The shared administrative support among tribunals allows the judiciary to use our very scarce resources more wisely, especially since many tribunals do not sit on a daily basis. Drawing from the experience of this one-stop shop at Kenya Re Towers, I direct that all court stations embrace the concept of innovative shared services for tribunals. This model should be replicated in other court stations to ensure maximum utilization of space and also human resource capital. Tribunals should be able to find suitable space and courtrooms when they visit court stations outside Nairobi during their circuits. And the political parties tribunal is one example that moved around the country and they found accommodation in our court stations. Therefore, I urge the court stations to adopt this innovative model of shared services. Um, today, we are also launching the tribunal's website, an initiative aimed at making information about the tribunals more accessible to Kenyans. Through this website, uh, citizens, uh, I've lost my train of thought. Through this website, citizens will be able to access information on how to launch their cases. They can view the course lists of the scheduled hearings. They can find out where the tribunal is sitting, especially those who are sitting outside of Nairobi. They can access all the relevant information easily. And this is part of the initiative to avail legal information to the public as an enabler for deep deepening access to justice. The third item we are launching today is the Tribunal's Registry Manual, 
which harmonizes and standardizes registry operations across all the tribunals. In the past, each tribunal operated independently, leading to confusion and challenges for litigants. By implementing this harmonized and standardized registry manual for all the tribunals, we are now positioned to streamline our operations and provide greater clarity and consistency in our registry processes. To ensure that the tribunals can deliver expeditious and effective services, it is also crucial that the appellate processes work efficiently as well, given the supervisory rule of the superior courts, I urge that we embrace structure and engagement between the tribunals and the superior courts to enhance the administration of justice. Most appeals from the tribunal go to the high court, so I urge the principal judge of the high court and the presiding judge of the commercial and tax division of the High Court to establish ongoing structure and engagement with the tribunals to streamline these appellate processes. It defeats uh, common sense if a matter can be completed here within 100 days and then the appeal will have to wait for three years. Similarly, appeals from seven tribunals, including the Water Tribunal, Land Acquisition Tribunal, Business Rent Tribunal, Rent Restrictions, National Environment Tribunal, Cooperative Tribunal, all of them go to our ELC. I encourage the presiding judge of ELC to maintain continuous collaborative engagement with the tribunals to streamline appeals from those bodies. In the fullness of time, I know the way that the court works very efficiently. We we'll establish a division of appeals from the tribunal so that these cases can move faster and can be given priority. Lastly, appeals from the Sports Dispute Tribunal and HIV and AIDS Tribunal, which are often involve matters of discrimination and doping go to the Employment and Labor Relations Court. I similarly urge the principal judge of the Employment and Labor Relations Court to engage continuously with these tribunals to ensure also a smooth, appellate process. I also want to address a challenge we have been facing regarding the prompt payment of compensation to tribunal members. As a judiciary, we understand the importance of time repayment for services, including allowances. We are actively working to resolve this issue, and I urge the Chief Registrar of the Judiciary to implement a system that ensures prompt payment of allowances to tribunal members. I'm a member of the Judicial Service Commission, where people are paid allowances, and those allowances are paid on the 22nd of every month. I do not see why the members of the tribunal should not be paid their allowances also on the 22nd of every month. Because these payments will also be made anyway, isn't it? Why not be made promptly? So in conclusion, Today marks a significant milestone as we unveil a supportive system that will enable our tribunals to discharge their mandate effectively and efficiently. The shared service infrastructure, website and registry manual are designed to create a supportive environment for our tribunals and to ensure that Kenyans access these services with his. This is towards achieving a people-centered justice. And with these remarks, and on behalf of all of us, on behalf of the judiciary, on behalf of the Judicial Service Commission, I even bring their greetings. They are somewhere else on official duties. I am most honored to declare the tribunal's shared service infrastructure 
tribunal's website and tribunal's registry manual officially launched. I thank you all for all your support, for all your encouragement, for all your commitment, and I pray that God will continue to bless you and guide you. Thank you.